their way. Did uh, did my pre-trip. Slept in. Checked all my securements. We're headed to Rogers. Had a little bit of ice on the ground today. That's all right though. <clears throat> we got all day to drive uh, 600, well, 688 miles. Uh, there's no uh, there's no overnight parking at the at the customer, so we're gonna find a place to park tonight, pretty close, and uh, stay there. Oh. I mean, I slept and slept and slept. I was gonna get up at about seven this morning, eat Eastern time, and <clears throat> and uh, it was uh, it was not happening. I got a nice vet. It was packed in the back, Looked like they were traveling. Uh, but yeah, it was. Uh, look at all these trucks, man. Man, they packed them in here last night. Ah, oh, Jesus. Traffic. Sorry, right, I'm right outside of Cincinnati, so I expected that. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I slept a little longer, is uh, to avoid a little bit of this. But we'll be out of it pretty soon, I would suspect. Today we're going to talk about, uh, somebody asked me to talk about uh, the training truck. So I'm going to talk about training truck today and, and tell you my experience on training truck. I'll give you a, a, a disclaimer though, this is just my experience. Uh, I've talked to other people about training trucks and uh, their experience was a little bit different than mine. So I'll tell you about mine and I'll tell you what they've said about theirs. 3.8 miles uh, ahead, take exit 173 yeah. I 71 south. I'll, I'll do that, all right. But uh, yeah, I'll talk about my, my experience and uh, let you know how that goes. So stay tuned and we're gonna drive a little bit and uh, gonna get a shower today. We'll stop for a little while and get a shower and, and uh, yeah. turned out to be a pretty nice day. Uh, had me a stop, got a shower, and had some lunch. And I'm about, I don't know, something like 80 miles or 60 miles away from St. Louis, somewhere in there. But man, it's nice out there. A little chilly, but it's, uh, it's sunny and not as gloomy. And that makes me happy. Yeah, okay. Left exit, 96, gotcha. Uh, so, training truck. Uh, this is just my, you know, my uh, experience on the training truck. I have talked to a couple of people about it. Um, uh, my friend John, I've talked to him about his. A couple of people from the, from the, uh, uh, class that I was in I talked to them about it uh, so uh, my experience with the training truck that it, it wasn't a bad one um, you are I believe they've taken the stipulation of uh, how many days you have to spend on the training truck out uh, it was 21 days uh, but I think they've taken that stipulation out and I think they're leaving it up to the trainer so I was on the training truck for four weeks. After, during the third week, uh, my trainer asked me if I was ready to, to uh, you know, do it on my own, and, and I was. I mean, I, <clears throat> I'm comfortable. With, I was comfortable with the drive-in. The, the securements weren't uh, weren't giving me a whole lot of trouble, and uh, you know, I I had taken uh, you know the things that he had he had wanted me to work on. I'd taken those to heart. And, and worked and really was diligent about working on on doing it the way you know he wanted it done because like i said i'm a noob you know uh if 
you don't if you don't come into to it with the attitude of of I I I need to learn, then 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 you're not gonna you're not gonna learn at all. Um, but uh, so after during the third week, he had he had actually sent a message in to his fleet manager telling him that uh, uh, I was ready to come off at the end of the week, and it would have been something like. Uh, 19 days or so something like that well at that time they were still mulling around the decision on whether or not to uh, you know do away with the 21 days uh, so I hadn't been there 21 days so they sent him a message back at toward the end of the week and and told him that uh, I had to I had to stay on at least through that next Monday so we we were gonna we were gonna come back through on a, like a Tuesday or Wednesday, um, and he was gonna let me off then. But we were just we were just changing over to um, to the ELD or EDLs or ELDs or however they want to call it. Um, and so he he decided that that since we were gonna switch over at the end of the fourth week, uh, he wanted me to go ahead and stay on until that Friday, and and get a little bit of experience with this new system, which I did, and that was okay. Uh, we did some running around Dallas and Oklahoma, and at first they were gonna send us to, they were gonna send us to like West Virginia and crap. He's like, no, we can't be doing that. So, so I spent, I spent four weeks on the training truck. Uh, the first week, it's really the first week, it, and each trainer is going to be different. Uh, I know my uh, my friend John; he spent five weeks, and his trainer had a rule that you spent five weeks on his truck no matter what. Uh, so you know there may be trainers out there that have, you know, they have a stipulation where they're going to keep us keep a person until they're comfortable with them with them uh, uh, or with their driving and their securement and stuff. There are some that that might want you off in that three weeks I don't know um, I'm just telling you what I, I experienced so the really the the hardest thing to get used to when you're in the trainer truck is that is is basically living with someone 24 7 that is a stranger all right uh, it, but I'll give you a couple of tips on on uh, on how to handle that. The first first tip is you you've got to have the attitude that this is their house. Okay, this truck is my house right now. It's you know when I'm not at my when I'm not at home, this truck is where I live. You know, and and things are things on this truck. I'm the, now I'm still figuring out where I want some things and and how I want things situated, but pretty much I've got. I've got everything where I want it. Uh, that way I know where it's at and I don't have to really fumble with it and mess around with it. Um, and your trainer's gonna be the same way. They're gonna want to have stuff their way, okay? It, 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 it's not, it, it's their house, okay? And they're gonna give you some space. My trainer gave me um, uh, one of the big cabinets and one of the small cabinets. So I had a cabinet for for my, um, the small cabinet I kept all my paperwork in, uh, and then and then I kept my PPE and, and that stuff in that cabinet also. That way I knew exactly where it was. I could reach up and get it anytime uh, I needed to, and um, uh, the paperwork was right there with it, so I knew where it was and I didn't have to fumble around with it. Uh, the, um, the other cabinet, the big cabinet, I used for for storing like my um, um, my CPAP bag, and uh, at that point I was carrying a laptop with me at, uh, that first week, so I I kept it in there. Um, but I didn't keep any of my clothes or anything in there. I kept them in my duffel bag. So you know if you come into the, come into it with the attitude of of this is their house and you're a guest in their house, then you've you've already got you know, one, one foot in the door uh, on, on being a good guest, okay? The other tip is pack light. I packed, um, I packed a week's worth of clothes with me. Um, 
and uh, I kept that in my duffel bag. I kept, I carried my duffel bag with me and a backpack so that when I went in to take a shower, um, I would have, I could just take some clothes out of my duffel bag and put them in my backpack. And that seems to work out really well. I still do that. Uh, I just keep all my clothes in my backpack or in my in my duffel bag, and I keep it down here in my, in my passenger floorboard. And then when I want when I want to go take a shower, I just pull clothes out of the duffel bag, put them in my in my uh, uh, in my backpack, and take those in with me, so I'm not lugging a big old duffel bag around. Um, you know, you got to pack light because there's not a lot of room in the in the cabs or in the in the sleeper berth and and that's you know you just don't want to you don't want to encroach on on their house you know what i mean um the the other tip that i'd give you is um when you're packing your bag i have found that rolling my clothes instead of folding my clothes i can fit a lot more in that duffel bag than, than actually just folding them and stacking them up you roll your if you fold it and then roll that clothes clo and roll that piece of clothing uh, into a cylinder you can pack a lot in a small duffel bag you can get a, you can get a lot in there man so just keep that in mind um, I carried a um, I carried a sleeping bag with me that way I didn't have to mess around with sheets and all that stuff I did have my pillows uh, that's something that I, I don't compromise on uh, I keep I keep three pillows. I've got one for my shoulder because uh, I keep I keep my shoulder propped up. It does hurt every now and then. Uh, I keep one between my legs and one to sleep on. So, you know, three three pillows is what I what I, I use, and that's that's what I maintain. Um, but other than that, um, you know, you don't really need a whole lot. Uh, your trainer will uh, uh, give you a little space in the in the refrigerator and you can use their microwave uh, pretty much if you need to uh, but most of them want to stop at a, at a at a truck stop if at all possible that way you can get a shower every day and you can um, you can uh, uh, get something to eat if you don't bring stuff with you I would suggest bringing a little bit with you just so that you're not spending a lot of money eating out every day because it can it can uh, chew, chew through some money uh, the uh, So my trainer uh, did something for me that I really appreciated uh, when it came to showers. Every other fill-up, every time we stopped at a gas station, I was allowed to use my my uh, rewards card on every other fill-up. That and that gave me enough points on my on my rewards card to get a shower just about every day. Okay, so you get it. So if you when you first start out, you need to go get you a pilot card and a loves card because those are the two main places that we fill up. Uh, Flying J is an affiliate of pilot. And ask your trainer and see if they'll let, allow you to, to use your card every other fill up. 50 gallons is what you need at, at both of those or all three of those places to, to be able to get a shower. And you're filling up 50 gallons a day. I mean, the way we run. I fill up every, every day. I mean, I've got like four credits on my on my pilot card right now. But uh, my my trainer only liked to stop at Pilots and Flying J's. That was his prerogative. I don't care. I'll stop at either one of them or all three of them. It doesn't matter to me. I use my rewards card on all of them, so I can stop it. Right now, I can stop at either Loves, a Pilot, or a Flying J, and I can take a shower at any one of them if I stop tonight or tomorrow or whatever. You know, and that's that's kind of why I, I alternate like that because you never know what's going to be in, in the area. But uh, if they're if they're willing to do that, that's going to help you out a lot because a shower is eleven or is twelve bucks, okay. And if you're taking a shower every day and you're having to spend twelve bucks a day, that's going to eat into that six hundred dollar check, big time. So you know, if you, if you're not stopping at a terminal, you might want to ask them about about switching off. Securement, <clears throat> the, probably the second hardest thing is getting used to the securement pace. Okay, your trainer is going to be a seasoned person, and they are going to be faster than you are. All right, um, so you want to pay attention and you want to emulate what they're doing. Okay, 
if they're if they're any good, they're gonna you're gonna be able to emulate what you know and, and be successful in what you're doing when you get out on your own. You are gonna be much slower on your own than you are with your trainer. Your trainer, some of the trainers I've heard uh, will let you do it on your own. My trainer did not. He um, he said he said that he didn't see the point. Uh, one thing that I wish he would have done though is allowed me to fold those those lumber tarps by myself once just so that I knew what what it was going to take in order to do it um, now don't get me wrong my trainer was a really good guy we got along great okay and it was because of the attitude that I brought in you know he said he's had some difficult people and and some people you know they just, he just some sometimes he just rubs people the wrong way but you know my attitude was easier to help me and I'm and, and I'm here to learn so you know that but that was one thing that I wish he would have done is let me fold that lumber tarp by myself because let me tell you something man the first time I folded that lumber tarp by myself I was not happy <laughs> it took forever wind was blowing it, it hurt uh, I would suggest doing some lower back exercises because you're bent over the whole time you're doing it and it's not fun it is not fun at all um, now I like I said I've gotten much faster at it um, but uh, that first couple of times man I had wondered what the hell I'd gotten myself into um, but uh, so ask them they're gonna let you fold the, the four foot tarps the, the steel tarps by yourself because they're gonna show you they're gonna show you a trick on how to do that it's a it's a one-man thing and it doesn't take hardly any time at all and they'll show you that in a securement class um, but uh, it's uh, those lumber tarps, man. They are they are, are they're they're a mess. Uh, but uh, if you get a trainer that doesn't want you, you know, it's not going to let you do stuff by yourself. Go ahead, go ahead and ask them to let you do that by yourself, just so you know. Um, but uh, really, it's not a it's the training truck is not a big deal. Um, uh, you know, some trainers are rougher than others, uh, and if you get a trainer that you're just not meshing with, and they'll tell you this during securement and, and a little and the class after securement, if if you're not meshing with your trainer, or he's not, or she he or she's not not getting you where you need to be, then then request another trainer. You can do that. Um, just call your fleet manager. You're going to have a separate, separate fleet manager than your trainer. And you're going to call your fleet manager and you can say, Hey, look, he's just, this, this is not working out for me. You know, we just don't mesh. Our attitudes don't, don't work together. And, and I'm, not, I'm not really feeling it. And they'll, they'll help you out. So, you know, call your, call your fleet manager. Um, but uh, it's, really, it's really not a... It's not a long time. It actually goes by a lot quicker than what you think. Um, it, it seems like it's a long time when you're there, but it actually goes by much, much quicker than what you think. Uh, it's a it, it's a good experience as long as you as long as you go into. It. You're gonna get um, you're gonna get a packet with paperwork in it, and that's where I would suggest keeping all of my stuff. I kept my birth certificate. I kept my I kept all my paper, all the all the papers that they had given me. Uh, I kept everything in that in that envelope. Um, but you're going to have a stack of papers, and it's going to have a couple of things in it. You're going to have a you're going to have a weekly form that you have to fill out, and it's an it's a self evaluation on where you think you are in your training. And it's going to have a lot of questions on it. And you're just going to hit. You're just going to say, you know, you're going to put. Um, uh, exceeds uh, needs work good whatever you know whatever it says on there you're gonna evaluate yourself and then you're gonna hand it over and you're gonna sign it and then you're gonna hand it over to your trainer and they're gonna evaluate you on the way they think you're progressing and then on the back of that piece of paper there's gonna be spots for them to write down how you know what you've do what you're doing right what you've done right for that week and what you need to work on and I would suggest that you read it and you take it to heart and you work on those things and you I mean actively work on them and let them know that you know you're 
you think you like like one of the things that I had to work on was off tracking. So when I was in the city and I was doing a lot of turns or a lot of curves and stuff, um, the back of my trailer would off track into the next lane. And during my second week, he noticed that, and he, you know, he gave me some suggestions on how to fix that. And it took me a little bit, and I, I figured it out. And I told him, I said, I think I figured out this off-tracking thing. And I made sure that I, I looked at my mirrors every time I was going around a corner to, to, to judge where I was at in that off-tracking. Uh, and it took me, it just took me about a day, about a day, maybe a half a day, to, to, to fix that. So, you know, take those, take those notes to heart. You have to you have to transflow those in every single week. Do not be late. They got to be in by Monday or before before the end of the day Monday, or you're late. And it's it it's two things. You know, it, it gives your fleet manager an idea of how you're doing in your training, and it also gives you it gives you um, um, uh, some practice in getting your paperwork on getting your paperwork transflowed in on time. Um, you also are going to have a daily log, daily journal that you have to keep, and it's a sheet. And you'll you'll log down where you're, where you've been, uh, what cities you drove in, whether you drove on two lanes, four lanes, divided highways, interstates, mountain driving, whether it was wet, snowing, dry, um, uh, icy. I mean, there's all kinds of things you've got to fill out on that thing. And you need to do that at the end of every day. If you don't do it at the end of every day, you're going to forget. All that stuff has to be turned in after your training. That, that whole thing has to be turned into your fleet manager when your training is done and before you graduate. They will not let you graduate if that stuff's not filled out. And trust me, they're going to tell you. There are people that wait. And if you wait, you're not going to remember where you've been. I don't remember where I've been I don't remember where I was last week. I mean, it's just, you just don't. I mean, there's, you remember the place when you get there, you know, hey, I've been here before, you know, but you don't, uh, you don't remember when you were there. Uh, it's just, it, it's all kind of a blur. So you need to keep, you know, you, you can, like I, I keep saying it, you come in with a good attitude and like this is work, you know, and you do your work to the best of your ability, you're not going to have a problem. Remember that you are being evaluated the whole time. The whole time you're in CDL class, securement class, training class, and then the and then the classes after the week of classes after your training, you're being evaluated. Okay, you can be let go at any time. If they don't think that you're going to do this the right way, the way Maverick wants it done, they will let you go. You will you'll have your CDL, but you'll be you'll be working for Swift or 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 uh, Hirschbach or or Western Express or somebody but you won't be working for Maverick you know so come in with a good attitude that hey this is work this is what's asked of me they're going to compensate you very well and you want to maintain that money you know um, it's just it's a it's a it's a you you got to have that attitude have a good attitude, come in with a good attitude, and leave with a good attitude. That's the best advice I can give you. Okay, so we have stopped for the night. Um, it's a little after 7. Found a rest stop. Last one in Missouri. Yeah. Uh, I figured it would have been packed, but it was not. There's was, there was lots of spaces out there. Which is fine with me, because I just pull in and, and be done. Um, got 163 miles to go. Uh, traffic this morning uh, cost me a good 40 minutes um, and then I ran into a, some more traffic in St. Louis or right outside of St. Louis so that cost me a little bit um, so I didn't get as far as I wanted to I was kind of wanting to get you know pretty close to to Rogers but that's all right we've got an open window tomorrow between 7 and 3 and uh, we'll be there we'll be there probably I don't know we'll we'll start out about five in the morning or so and and be there pretty quick so um i appreciate everybody uh, uh watching and sticking with me today uh this is kind of a long video uh sorry about that uh but uh uh i got a couple of comments about uh naming the truck uh so if you want your uh if you want me to consider your name i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to take 
uh, all the names that I get over the next uh, maybe week or so and uh, and then I'll choose a couple of them and then I'll put them I'll, I'll let you guys know which ones I choose and then I'll let you guys vote on them how's that so uh, leave a comment down below if you've made it to the end of the video uh, give me a name uh, that you want to name the truck and uh, 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 yeah leave me a comment so uh, hit that like button for me and uh, subscribe and if you've subscribed hit that uh, hit that notification button for me and uh, leave a comment down below let me know how I'm doing and and uh, how you're doing and and uh, let's start a conversation I'll see you guys tomorrow